The Jim Jeffrey Show on Comedy Central covers the most controversial issues through Jim's distinctive brand of comedy and global point of view. The Jim Jeffrey Show podcast, on the other hand, is a slightly more podcasty version. Listen each week as Jim Jeffries and co-host Forrest Shaw sit down with friends and guests to discuss news, politics, and all the things Jim couldn't, wouldn't, and shouldn't say on TV. Subscribe now to the Jim Jeffrey Show podcast and listen to new episodes every Wednesday on your favorite podcast app. Welcome to us all. All of us here in this place together, as it has been foretold by the audience Bible. Oh, not religious? Let me explain. We here in the theater we have our own Bible, and it tells of the beginnings of entertainment. Also, it talks about the theater devil. Thank you. If that music hadn't gone scary, I would have been very disappointed. The theater devil! He waits under the stage to make you forget your lines. That's why in the olden times, they used to have a little half dome at the front of the stage. Some idiot sitting in there in this tiny little space with a script. So the actors are there and they're like, for thee I forswear you are the son of my father's nemesis who never shall uh, oh, oh. what was it again then this dum dum in the little shell he's like maketh me to boil the blood of my very image shut up I was acting like I forgot this was the beginning of improv Improv began with actors who were bored. And they're like, what, the same words every time? Uh-uh. Not today, theater Satan. <laughs> actors are very superstitious, so superstitious. You can't do this, you can't do that. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Guess what? We already had some weird shit happen before the show. <laughs> so I think we're in the clear. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous show's guest. Then, I and some improviser pals will perform a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes inspired by a location provided by the special guest and oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from that aforementioned free-form conversation. On piano by Mr. Evan Schletter. <laughs> now, folks, when we do these live programs, and thank you for being here, by the way, what we like to do is chat with our improvisers first. So, folks, without any further ado, let me introduce to you two of the members of the Spontaneous Nation Tour Company. 
Sadly, Eugene Cordero cannot be with us this evening because he is doing something else. But the remaining members are here. First, say hello to Tony Newsom. I'm good. Uh, do, do you have a pillow there on your chair? We I don't do. Need to have these. I, we tried to make it homier. Right. Yeah, just <laughs> uncomfortable at a party. Yeah. I don't want anyone Sitting to see. Sitting there with the old pillow on the abdomen. I feel bloated, so I'll just hold this here. It's good. I already feel weird because this is the first time I'm wearing a dress on stage for Spontanea Nation. Now, what made that change happen, Tawny? Um, just like poor uh, wardrobe planning. Mm -hmm. I did Super Ego last night. That's and right, which I requires zero movement. And I should have, I should have worn the dress last night, but I messed up. So then I wore my pants last night and I didn't want to repeat, you know, an outfit because <laughs> improv is supposed to be organic and of the moment. Um, <laughs> So I wore a dress and I hate it so much. Can you imagine a sliding doors version of yourself? <gasps> wearing I pants. Be, I want to be Jean Triplehorn. <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> you guys remember sliding doors? Was she in that movie? Yes. I Jean, thought it was Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow played. More than one movie has a, a, a lady in it? <laughs> what? <laughs> Macbeth. <laughs> This is really more of like a symphony hall, so like we're still cool guys. It doesn't count. <laughs> no, Jean Triple. Beethoven. She played. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the bad luck music guy? Um, Jim Morrison. Philip Glass. <laughs> Philip Glass. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Wait, so Jean Triplehorn. It doesn't matter. No, it does. I need to know. She's the girlfriend. She's the girl sleeping with. Gwyneth Paltrow, sorry, spoiler. Um, with Gwyneth Paltrow's, the blonde Gwyneth Paltrow timeline. Okay. Jean Triplehorn is the mistress. Okay. And she's great in it. She's so great. I was the only kid that was like, I want to be that lady because she had like cool monologues and she was snappy. <sighs> Did she exist in both timelines or just in the one? I don't remember. I only remember her in the blonde Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, because I think it was like in the blonde one where it seemed like everything was great with her life because she was the blonde one, right? So things must be better in that life. Um, she was being cheated on. That's why it wasn't the good life. The one where she was a dowdy waitress and was brunette, which seems like a terrible plot. Um, that's the one where she like chose that one because that was better. It's a great hmm. film. But I... I don't like wearing a dress on stage for one reason. What's that? Because in improv, uh, you know, you have to move around and stuff. The Second City, which is my old stomping ground, my old alma mater, birthplace of improv, they required women to wear dresses until just as recently as when I was there, 2012. 2012, I had to tour around the country wearing a dress to do improv. So, just wanted to take a shot at a... <laughs> what, what was their stated thing. reason for this? Oh, just that, like, we all needed to be dressed better than our audience. So, like, the men wear suits. Like, it's very... Like, you'd fit in great there. Thank you. should you. go. <laughs> they just thought it was more like cocktail attire. Did you ever come across an audience who was better dressed than the performers on stage? Maybe one time we played a synagogue in Bethesda, Maryland, and they were all there... <laughs> They were all clearly there for like what they thought was a fun cocktail hour, and then we showed up and were like, two hours of scripted jokes. <laughs> they were not happy. There was a chocolate fountain in the center of the room. It was awful. And they had you beat because everyone was wearing hats. <laughs> that guy liked it. Tony Newsom, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We're having a fun pillow fight. There you go. I saw the drinks in your hands one second after I threw that pillow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Little Janet Varney! Is she gonna do it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Miss, I'm so sorry, please. 
Please, oh no, oh no. Miss. <laughs> miss, miss, I'm so sorry. Need she pillow. needs a pillow. Can you, can you give her a cushion? Thank you. Thank ah! you. Cushion Corner that's, gets you every time. Thank you. That's the most physical work I'll do the entire show. <laughs> that was it. I also am wearing spent. Dress. I am spent. How do you feel, Janet, <laughs> about wearing a dress on stage during improv? Are you okay with it? Well, I'm okay with it because I am wearing pants under a dress. Sure. And was that not allowed? What? You could, could you slip a pair of pants underneath your dress at Second City? I'm Prob shocked. I almost didn't come out. I was so shocked <laughs> to hear that. Like in not. protest of a place we are not at. Like, well, I'm on strike then. <laughs> I'll tell you this truly, truly. I was in a show with Aidy Bryant and our director said, since Aidy is wearing a dress, you get to wear pants in this one. What? <laughs> what does that mean? But if she had wanted to wear pants, it would have been no dice. And the that director's name, you can look it up. Oh. <laughs> have you seen the film Sliding Doors? I certainly have, Paul. Now, <laughs> can you corroborate that Gene Triplehorn appears in both Gwyneth Paltrow timelines? I had forgotten utterly about Janie Triplehorn, but <gasps> she is in it. She's very good. Who's the guy? Who's the guy that? Who cares? She, no, but he's like a. There's some. There's some. Some great. Uh, some. Some kind of great character actors in that. In that movie. But the guy who's. E. He's like a Marshall. British. A British or an Irish actor, right? <laughs> you, who is it? John Hanna. John Hanna. John Hanna. <laughs> yeah. He had a special credit at the end of the film. He was yeah. the only person allowed to yell his own name. Yeah. You, you run into the theater shouting that so that the movie is free. That's what it sounds like. John Hanna! And then like, we had that big, that big free speech debate. Yeah, yeah. Can you great yell movie. John Hanna? In what situations can you yell John Hanna? Yeah, it's great. It's a great movie. I remember all those moments. Who was the most villainous person from a movie that you identified with as a child? <laughs> The most villainous. I mean, offhand, what came into my mind was Violet Beauregard from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> because I do love gum, Paul. I just love gum. Do you really? To me, it made sense that she hid her gum behind her ear mm -hmm. because she was working on a gum chewing record. Mm -hmm. That part doesn't make sense, actually. Who wants to chew gum that doesn't have flavor anymore? Well, that's all gum. Here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I wish that I could like gum. Also, I think of her as a villain. <laughs> she was. Let's not gloss over that. She was, but some, somehow for Roald Dahl, like yeah. that was a sin. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, what other types of kids are there? Oh, uh, yeah. the ones that chew gum. <laughs> obsessed with fame, obsessed yeah. with richness, obsessed with gum. Yeah. What, what, okay, what are the things that kids do that, sh that are punishable by death? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Certainly Certainly by like a juice explosion, <laughs> that kind of juice death, the, the messiest blueberry death you yeah. can possibly imagine. Yeah, her body was just turned into a yeah. giant blueberry. Yeah. Uh, but you, you were an avid gum chewer as a child. I mean, I like gum. I feel it's and very American lie. too. I don't see when I'm when I'm anywhere but the states. I see gum for sale. I see no one buying it. I feel I see a layer of dust over all the gum. What? And I never see anyone chewing gum. Like no one's, it feels like suddenly it seems rude to have a piece of gum in your mouth when, when I travel. So maybe, maybe I swear it off from here on out. Do, do people in this audience tonight chew gum? to use phones during the show, but if someone could very quickly look up, does John Hanna chew gum? <laughs> For the, I need that circle. I need the circle to be complete. John Hanna, gum. I thought John you were drawing Hannah a heart gum. around the image of John Hanna chewing gum. I am now. How about the, the Baroness from uh, um, Sound of Music? Oh, no. <laughs> To be honest with you, I didn't see Sound of Music until I was an adult. It was one of those things. It was one of those movies where you say it and then you cringe because you're waiting for the gust of like surprise from yes. people. Like I've, I've never seen it. And then you cringe because they go, you've never seen the Sound of Music. <laughs> so I finally saw it. Do you have a movie like that though that you can't believe people have not seen? That in retrospect, obviously people have not seen this movie. Oh. But that was very important to you. Oh. 
Uh, I, I, I think I'm like that with the 1980s movie Tron. I expect that everyone has seen it and that it was important to them. Yeah. Janet, speak on uh, Tron's importance to you. Yes. <laughs> When I was a child and my parents had recently separated, when I was, say, five years old, my dad would turn all the lights out at night, and because our house was in a kind of a circular shape in terms of, like, it was a square, but you could, you could start in the living room and end in the living room. I'm, I'm going to let you imagine how that's even possible. Uh, he would, he, we would sort of do this, like, you know when parents pick up their kids to fly them like Superman? <laughs> or whatever I've... the Brits do. Uh, <laughs> British Superman, I guess. Um, and he would, and, and we would pretend like we were in light cycles from Tron, and we, we had like a, a, our alarm system had a motion detector, so you can, the red light blinks when you make motion. So we would try to, essentially what we're doing is burgling our own home. Right. I'll stop hitting my mic, but, but yeah, so we would sort of see, so it was this like very elaborate kind of imaginary game where we were inside the game grid. That is very sweet. Yeah. How many times did the police come to your home? <laughs> I mean, like two, three times tops. Then we stopped turning the alarm system on. Right. <laughs> Since we kept setting it off. Yeah, that didn't happen. We didn't ever set the alarm off. That was a joke. Yeah, everybody, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. When we return, we will introduce our special guest, Stay alive, no matter what occurs, I will find you. He robbed from the rich to provide for the poor. Of whom am I speaking? The only one who fits that description, Robin Hood. Robin Hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission-free. So, even if you're a stock market newcomer, like me, you can invest for the first time with true confidence. And let me tell you something. True confidence? You know it when you feel it. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, which means you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Do you get the name now? And with a clear design and easy to understand charts and market data, Robinhood lets you place a trade on your smartphone in just four taps. Tap four taps! Or if you're on the web... You can view stock collections like the 100 most popular, as well as sectors like entertainment, social media, and more curated categories like female CEOs. You can do this your way. Do you get what I'm saying to you about Robinhood? Plus, you can discover new stocks and track favorite companies with a personalized news feed and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Because it, let me tell you something. You miss those moments? There ain't no sliding doors. There, you, you'll never know if there's some Gwyneth Paltrow who did better than you at this. <laughs> you'll never know. All right. Robinhood is giving listeners, my listeners, a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build a portfolio. Sign up at spont.robinhood.com. That's S-P-O-N-T dot Robinhood dot com. Tally who, you little Johns. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest this evening is a broadcaster, a podcaster, a writer, and a very nice person who's helping us out this evening. Please welcome to the stage, Starly Kind. <laughs> Starly, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. You, you are a last minute guest. You were not originally booked on the show. It's true. I didn't know I was supposed to say that. No, that, yeah. you were not. <laughs> it's for me to say, John Hanna! <laughs> we, had, we had a guest who forgot that this was happening. <laughs> get 
for not making me the original ass. That's exactly right. Macbeth. Yeah. <laughs> so, Arlie, I have a question for you. Yeah. This comes to us from our previous episode's guest. Yeah. That question is, what is your relationship with God like? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so fortuitous. This is at, this is coming, you're asking this right now. <laughs> well, because like two days ago, oh, she won't listen because she believes in God. So, um, <laughs> famously, no religious people listen to this show. Yeah. The word is out. <laughs> I got into such a big fight with my sister. What days? We're, we're in London. I don't. Two, <laughs> like two American days ago. <laughs> yeah. Two, yeah. two of your Earth days. Yeah. 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 Because <laughs> we. <laughs> that's like a week ago, right? Right. Um. Because my sister. So I'm Jewish, but I'm like, talk with my hands. Culturally Jewish. I'm Jewish, but Jewish. Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> some of our friends are Jewish, yes. but they're not. They don't get to have the. They don't get to have like the bloodline of it. But I'm Jewish right. and Jewish. My sister, for some reason, has become an Orthodox Jew. What, how long ago? Like, like I think. Well, okay. So like five years ago, four or five years ago, she's gone through two two marriages since ju- becoming. She's on the third one, sticking. To it. Since she, since she went yeah, Orthodox, yeah. she There's, is... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She'll, she'll stay married to this guy, probably. But she... Um, <laughs> she'll never, ever hear this, I promise. <laughs> Saturday, never. Um, <laughs> I'd say I'm going to hell, but don't believe in it. Um, so... Uh, but she used to be a joiner. She used to join stuff. She used to, and it was always like stuff that was slightly askew to the real thing that was mm-hmm. supposed to be. Because I would love if she just like became like a holiday Jew. Um, but I'm sorry. <laughs> what is, holiday Jew yeah. is you. You just go to temple on holidays. No. No. Not even okay. that. You just have temple. Not even that. <laughs> you. you Holiday Jew, you'll see it on Instagram a lot among people we know. Like you, you have like the major holidays, you order some food in. Right. And then you have like a dinner party. Okay. Right? Right. And then you Instagram about it. Right. <laughs> Important this, component. This is your observance. Yeah. Is having it's a party and Instagram. observance it. Yeah. <laughs> is that I see people on Instagram doing this. Right. Um, <laughs> um, so there's no, you don't actually go to the temple, and then you also like maybe invite a cool, the cool rabbi over to do the <laughs> games. Like the kind that would book an improv show at the synagogue. Um, why? <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're on the same page. Right. Um, so she would, but she, so she kept joining groups. <laughs> that were like she was really into nutrition, and I wanted her to become a nutritionist, but instead she became like she got involved in a, a nutrition shake pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. It was my favorite phase of hers, <laughs> by far. Why? What I miss it. I miss it so much. Because you like the shakes? No, they were. <laughs> I like the phase, because she would do this thing where she was, had to like, she was like an ambassador for the shakes. Oh, <laughs> I love when they use terms like that. <laughs> Dude, like, I just had like a sash. <laughs> and then she has to go to the shake embassy. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it really works too, because she'd be like, "I'm an ambassador. You have to talk to me different." Like you it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Respect the office, if not the woman. <laughs> and she would do these things, but she would have to like there had to be like a quota she would fulfill of 
like <laughs> how many pick times a day she'd have to like post a picture of the shake. And so she'd be at work, but she's not, she doesn't care about aesthetics at all. Clearly, because now look where she's landed, but she, like, I have so much shade. I have so much shade for this lifestyle. <laughs> you have no idea. I'm so annoyed by it. If you had asked me, again, two American days before, maybe I'd be more generous, but we mm. had, like, a sibling fight. Right. So now there's, like, no generosity. Absolutely. I have to dig Understood. in as hard yeah. as possible. <laughs> and so, with the shake, phase she would post she'd be at work and she would post these pictures of these styrofoam cups with like the shake at the bottom of they were so disgusting like a plastic spoon styrofoam cup and like the shake it was the nastiest thing and she would do the thing where my favorite time was when she would talk about mixing the shake and one of her friends posted like a comment being like i love making shakes too in the morning i make a shake with bananas apples grapes all this fruit my sister was like mm. Very unhealthy. <laughs> you have to put the shake. It's, it's called Shakeology. You have to only put Shakeology in. It was called Shakeology? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she was an ambassador for Shakeology. So you just drink the Shakeology by itself. That's the healthiest way. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. With a little bit of water and maybe an ice cube. <laughs> to thicken it up. But did I, you, I, I have to ask, did you ever taste any of these shakes? I did. I had to get some. <laughs> like, I was given such a hard time for judging her for it. And so then, um, then she sent me, I had to order a shipment and then, like, like six giant bags of this. Uh, bags! <laughs> why, is that so, why is that so much worse? Like, I thought, I thought it was like a canister, but it's a, just a sack. <laughs> Like cement. It was oh. so dusty. So and, the only, dusty. <laughs> and the only way I got through it, it reminded me of, remember in Rosemary's Baby when she was like drinking, um, eating the chocolate yeah. thing and she's like, I, it's so chalky. That's what it tasted like. <laughs> exactly like that. I know how that, what she ate tastes. I know what that right. scene tastes like right. because I've had Shakeology. <laughs> if you've ever tasted a scene, it tastes like Shakeology. I gotta get my hands on some Shakeology. <laughs> I wanna have the full Rosemary's Baby experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. <laughs> that's one of the things that she joined. It was my favorite. Yeah. I miss it. <laughs> I mourn for it. Because you were entertained by the the pictures and all that I stuff? Was, I loved the pictures. I loved, um, but I just, it also felt safer <laughs> to me. This pyramid scheme felt mm. safer than this other pyramid scheme that I feel like she's a part of now. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what was your relationship to religion growing up? Like, oh, well, we were... Jewish. So we, I mean, I'm such a Jew too. Like fully, there's the, the, if you did the, I don't even have to do 23 in me. I know it's all just goes down to the same source, but, um, but we were like, we didn't go to, we didn't, I was, I didn't have a bat mitzvah. We didn't go to temple. We convinced our parents for, fairly early to let us have a Christmas tree. We started with blue and red. <laughs> the campaign started. Hey, you know what? What are we doing? Let's just get one. <laughs> We did blue and white lights at first, and then by the next year, it was multicolored. <laughs> did you want to have a bat mitzvah? I didn't know about it. That's <laughs> but, like, but friends at school or I anything like that? I knew about bar mitzvahs, but I didn't know about bat mitzvahs. Oh my god. Yeah. You didn't know any girls who had a bat mitzvah? No, I think I was also, I'm realizing that I, I, I also think we were the only Jewish family <laughs> where we grew up. Right. I grew up outside of LA, and I didn't realize <laughs> that there were all these Jews right. 40 minutes away. <laughs> and so um, we, were the, we lived in a suburb, and I was like, the, I didn't know any Jews other than my family members. And my grandmother, her name, like, I have like, my, I have like relatives named Fanny and Goldie. My grandfather's name is Hi. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like, like I, they were all Jewish, but we didn't have any of the religious part. 
Right. Did you want to have a bat mitzvah when you got older, or did you feel like you missed out on something? Yeah, because now I know it's where all the connections are made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Of course. <laughs> I would have been. I would have been furious <laughs> if I if I knew what a if I knew what a bar mitzvah was like it's the special thing that's all about you <laughs> and then I found out later yeah. that I didn't get one I would have been incensed yeah because now it's like I, it's a it's a great party right yeah it's like the best it's like your dream party too yeah. it sounds like when you get to have a bar mitzvah you, you get to have choose. a theme and yeah. everything yeah yeah and you're out doing each other it's <laughs> least people I know yeah. I had no idea we had, uh, in, I grew up Catholic, and we had confirmation, which was um, you, 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 that's when you become an adult in the eyes of God, not anywhere else. But it's like, basically, it's like, now you're responsible for your own actions and eligible for hell. So you, you, pick, a, you pick a new middle name that you get to add into your existing name, and you wear a stole, and I think you hold a candle, I can't remember. And I remember um, being furious. Uh, oh no, it was first communion was the one where that's, that's the first time you receive Holy Communion. And my family did it separately from the rest of my class. I went to Catholic school. And so it was gonna be the whole class was doing it at the same time. And we, for whatever reason, it was important to my mom and dad that we did it as a family, just us, where we went up and I was, so mad. I was so mad at this that I didn't get to do this dumb thing with the rest <laughs> of my dumb little friends. So everyone had communion together at your school? Yeah, it was it was a ceremony. And so it would be, you know, the class would go up one by one and receive yeah. the Holy Eucharist. And then um, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Feels very intimate. Yeah, well, I didn't want it to be. I didn't want it to be. I wanted it to be very public. <laughs> No, that part feels intimate. The school together signing their souls away or whatever. <laughs> how does it work? I don't know how it works. <laughs> it's very, look, it's a very personal thing. You were yeah. saying, okay, I'm on the hook for this. <laughs> like if I, <laughs> we're past telling lies now, like, yeah. like trying to get out of, go to school. Now it's like I, I could do things that will make me damned for all time. <laughs> like chew gum. Like chew <laughs> <laughs> That's how that made it into the, the book. <laughs> what, was the, what was the tipping point for your sister going uh, orthodox? Okay. <laughs> this is so satisfying. Like, <laughs> like, today I woke up kind of bad. I was going to send her a text being like, I'm really sorry. I'm not now. <laughs> now, I like, now I just feel like this is what everyone should happen. This is what should happen after everyone has a fight with a family member. They get to they go to just, you know, <laughs> they're be acted out later. There's so much more to come. <laughs> like, I, mean, I was right, and if I see it, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think what happened is so she had all these phases, and another phase she she also had like. Sh I, she she was a real joiner. She had a fitness phase too, and she also like dated a lot. She was always like date someone who had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I feel that I don't know. I honestly feel like she kind of didn't trust herself to live a life without rules. Mm -hmm. And the other, psychology wasn't cutting it. <laughs> I need more structure than psychology can provide. <laughs> <laughs> and so I feel like she looked for the thing that was going to give her the most like parameters for what to do. Mm -hmm. And then when it first happened, I was like, this is definitely a phase because they're all a phase. Look at all the Shakeology in my bags and my shelf that I haven't touched in three years. And <laughs> all these dust storms that happen every time I open up the drawer. Um, and so I was waiting for it to end and then it didn't end. Then she actually like got married, mm -hmm. and now she's got kids. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> so what was, if I may, what yeah. was the argument okay. about? So, so she was. She was actually. She just moved back to L.A. where I've been staying too, and she, and I've been. She has these. She has two little kids. Just, she promises she's cutting it off after that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What? What? <laughs> Why can't 
<laughs> she has kids. <laughs> she can't have. She can't have like a lot. <laughs> well, fair enough. Okay. I'll, look, you know better than I do. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> and so we were I was like I went to her house to help her with the babies they're like they're, they're really little and so I went to help them mm. we had a nice day but she's living in this like orthodox neighborhood which I feel like I was really good about that whole day <laughs> <laughs> and then and we like went to like the kosher market and I bought some um, pirates booty because <laughs> we had that there sure. and then um, it's an American brand uh, and it's basically Shakeology in <laughs> yeah, like Cheeto form. It's it's. Do you know Pirates Booty? Do they have that here? Yeah. It. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a sort of cheesy savory chalky. snack. It's pretty chalky. It's made to. Trick you into thinking it's popcorn? It's not popcorn. It's not any of the things that it's trying to trick you into thinking that it is. Yeah. And it's it's a it's a healthy snack, but yeah. it's probably just as bad for you as anything. It's shake allergy. It's fully it's shake allergy. Yeah. It's straight up shake allergy, yeah. guys. <laughs> but like everyone it. we know has bought into. It's yeah. our cult. And so um, we went to the market, and then we were going to get a coffee, Starbucks, and then we <laughs> it was all going great, and then. <laughs> And then she said something, I don't know, it was just like, she lives in this really weird neighborhood where you only see like, one type of person. And then I, and she tried to point out that there was someone who was different. And I was like, well, you're not gonna sell me on the diversity front in, in this regard. And then she got really upset. And we just fully, what I didn't realize was how much I'd been keeping down. Mm. And then just like right there, there was like one old man sitting at the table next to us who kept looking over and I was just like, we had a full on sister fight. Right. Like full on, like no, we weren't listening to each other. Nothing was rational. She took, I was holding the baby. She took the baby out of my hand. She was like, I don't need him around this. It's just gonna confuse him. The baby was like, it's five months old. Like nothing was confusing. <laughs> Being upright was confusing. Him. <laughs> and we were just like our worst selves, completely like sticking to our position. Right. And then we came, we walked down a street like that <laughs> so dramatically. Came home, her husband came home, he was all smiley, and then um, she like stormed into the other room. And then I said, We're having a fight. And he was like, Not, he's new to the family. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I feel like he was not equipped. He's only seen us like behave, yeah. and he was not equipped for like two sisters, like hundred percent, like doing the. She like she, and then she said she had to do an errand. She slammed the door. I said I have to leave, and she's like, see ya. Like it was all. It was everything. It was everything. It felt pretty good sure. in the moment, <laughs> but then it felt bad after, and now it feels great again. <laughs> Do you think uh, you will end up reconciling? Like this is this is a thing that happens sometimes. Yeah, I think so. What it made me think. So what so what it made me think is I feel like I'm being intolerant because I'm be because I'm a sister. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Like mm -hmm. it is like trumping how I actually feel and ramping <laughs> up. This is like therapy now. This is so <laughs> good. <laughs> um, and so it's ramping up what I actually would say was just like a person <laughs> right. and because she's my sister I'm refusing to see reason and I'm actually saying offensive things at this point. Like it's that you wouldn't say to anyone else. No way. Yeah. <laughs> no, way. no way. But I'm saying it with like gusto too. Yeah. Like not only am I like would I not say to other people I'm like fully like giving speeches about it to right. her and so it's clearly because we're sisters. All right. Yeah so that my relationship with God is very tied up. <laughs> 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 and I guess as long as she believes in God, I'm going to be forced to not believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> Starling Kai, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Folks, we're going to take another break. When we return, we will reveal the location for our improv provided to us by our guest, Starling Kai, and then... We're gonna do that improv. <laughs> All of this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns! This 
this week, Earwolf is transforming into something scary. Earwolf with an F in front. Get it? No? Jesus. Fear Wolf, right? Is coming to haunt your precious ears with spooky episodes and hair rising special guests on all your favorite shows, except this one, on Unspooled. Paul Shear and Amy Nicholson break down one of the most influential horror films of all time, Psycho. Wee, wee, wah, wah, woo, woo, wah, wah. That's the music. Off book is serving up an Halloween musical spooktacular. It's scary. The Andy Daly podcast pilot project is already a scary name to say for the guy who hosts the show, but not for me. I knocked it out of the park. But this week's episode takes you through a walking tour of haunted Scotland with a cast of frightening characters with even more frightening Scottish accents. I'm in that one. And... Head over to Stitcher Premium. Or should I say Stitcher Screamium? I'll wait for you to answer. To get some couples costume tips from Sean and Hayes on the Hollywood Handbook Pro version. Oh, can you imagine anything scarier than a show being shorter and taking less effort and yet it costs money? So go listen to... The podcasts. Why is this a whole separate page, Matt? Whole separate page for the call to action. Look, check this shit out. This is on one piece of paper. Don't miss your favorite Earwolf shows this week on Stitcher Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. I mean, come on. Bump the font down to 11 and get it all on one page. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, ladies and gentlemen. It is now time to reveal the location for improv provided to us by our guest, Starly Kind. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene, we need to travel into the past for some reason. Someone's having a memory, we're learning how something came to be. Anytime we travel into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. Now, you can't stay in the past forever, folks. <laughs> Let's say we need to move forward in time, get back to where we were, out of the flashback. Gotta get back in time, anytime. <laughs> anytime we move forward in time, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now, <laughs> this final sound moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We need to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. Moving only in space, not in time. We use this meanwhile sound effect. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to reveal the location we're brought right to us. My guess, the kind of the location is... A train platform. A train platform. We take you now to a train platform. A new life. <laughs> yeah. You deserve this. You deserve it. It's for you. You can take it. What if you get lonely? Doesn't matter, make a new friend. What if you get sad? See answer A. Oh, gosh, so excited and scared. Pick one. <laughs> nice sash. Thank you. You seem like you're some kind of liaison or, I don't know, some kind of emissary or something. But let me put it this way. If I murdered someone today, no one could take me to court or prison. 
Diplomatic immunity. Cool. You seem like your two people trapped inside the same body trying to sliding doors your own mind. You seem lost. Uh, wow, I guess, yeah, I do kind of feel like that. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with slideology. <laughs> I, but this magic powder will allow you to live two lives simultaneously. And what's great about it is, once you try it and like it, if you get six of your friends to buy this, you'll become very rich indeed. Just keep it this train. I don't know, I've been waiting for a while. Yeah, me too. Feels like, um, feels like I've been waiting for a lot of things for a while. Like Love. what? Okay. <laughs> and this package that seems to be taking longer to be delivered than uh, I was told. Is it on the train? I don't think so. I... Oh. That'd be happen. great if it were. <laughs> I just mean you're waiting for a package, but you're about to leave town? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I... I really... I just figured, you know, what, I'm gonna spend my whole life waiting for this FedEx package? No, you're right. I mean, I felt that same way. You do? That's why I ran away from my life. Please step back. <laughs> I just... I'm sorry, I just, got, I just got excited. I know, it just... I'm still, like, you are still a stranger and we're just on a That's train platform. That's very true. And when someone rushes at you. That's true. I've seen too many movies where someone kills someone by shoving them in front of the train. Ooh, Jesus. Haven't you seen that? I, I've never seen a movie. I grew up in a very religious household. Oh, I mean, me too, kind of. Well, we were just summertime Buddhists, but... Uh, oh. Were you guys year-round something or others? No, we were nighttime Christians. Oh! I hear that's tough, because how are you going to, like, tell your dreams not to swear or listen to secular music? Well, that's why I spend half of my day in confession from the night before. Darla? Yeah, Ma? Did you step on that ant before or after Labor Day? <laughs> I was wearing white pants, but I was very, it was out of fashion because it was September 2nd. Summer's over, baby. You're in the clear. <laughs> yeah, so that was tough for you, right? I mean, I, I had to lie about when things were all the time. No, I, you just told me the story about when you lied about the pants. Yeah, I know. I just... <laughs> I just didn't know if you needed it like summarized or something. Sometimes I tend to prattle on, and so sometimes at the end I just have to like wrap it up and like deliver it for you. <laughs> no, I mean I'm I'm pretty smart in most things, but <laughs> not in other things, I guess. Oh. Oh. <sighs> and then what did you do? Well, then, Son. Uh, I, um, are you, are you sleeping? What? What? Never for you, my child. It's only been 11 hours since you started your confession. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> I bet you thought it was smart to install these phones. <laughs> Oh, 
I'll tell you what, I like to use the phone to lean on when I'm Oh, also. no, I get that now. <laughs> well, it's funny because you can't see what I'm doing because we're in a confessional. Yeah, so. I know. You changed Hello? it up. Hello? No, Hello? I'm still here. Are you pretending that you can't, like, Hello? You, you lost me? <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> yeah. So. Sounds confusing. It is. It is. I know a thing or two about being confused. You do? <laughs> I'm sorry. Please I'm step. sorry. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, a while ago before you came up to this train platform, uh, I met, I don't know, a common huckster, uh, 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 sh uh, what are they called, a, a confidence man, a, sh a shoe shine, a charwoman, I don't know. <laughs> and she gave me uh, some, some powder and helped me sliding doors my own life. Wait, so this is something that already happened? I'm 90%, yeah. <laughs> you sure it's not something that's happening at the same time as this? Well, I guess I wouldn't know. Quick, what color's my hair? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'll try it. Oh, I know you will. <laughs> we just... <laughs> Does this always happen when you're trying to sell that stuff to people? No, I'm sorry. I was, I was just thinking about John Hanna. <laughs> what a delightful actor. What a talent. He's pretty good, yeah. Um, okay, so I just drink this stuff and then my timeline schisms into two timelines. And I have to keep track of both of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> This is wow. The, <laughs> what a beautiful a, sack. Yes. Oh. There are just a few rules if you just scan the small print. Uh, yeah. That'll probably help you keep track of uh, the kookiness that ensues. It's hard to read. It says, here, read these to keep track of the kookiness that ensues. Yeah. Uh, drink this powder. Don't add any water. You want it as dry as possible. <laughs> you want it to literally dry out your insides yeah. as you drink slash chew on it. <laughs> Please enjoy. Yeah. Your life is about to get complicated. <laughs> attention, attention. The train's just canceled. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. I think they forgot they were supposed to do train stuff today. <laughs> ah, here comes the train finally. Oh, finally. Yeah. Wow. I've been waiting for a while, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for a while. <laughs> hey, you... You feel like deja vu? Wait, like in the Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know how they say a deja vu in the Matrix is just a problem in the Matrix? <laughs> it's a glitch, right? It's a glitch in the Matrix. I guess so. So are you suggesting that this reality isn't the real one? And that maybe when that lady sliding door ologied me, my real self is the real one and you're just, just a sad man I dreamed? <laughs> You could have just said man. <laughs> Look at you. You're like a human equivalent of a, of a rain cloud. I know I'm sad. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've often thought maybe we're just living in a simulation. Huh. But then I think, why would someone simulate this? <laughs> I guess I was trying to run away from my life, you know, being a summertime Buddhist and Me all. Me too! You were? Yeah. <laughs> what was so bad about your life? <laughs> Honey? Yeah? I bought you a new car. Again? <laughs> what 
what can I say? Your wife, Doris, loves buying cars. I buy them every day, so many cars. Doris. Yes? If I go out there and I expect to see a car. Oh, boy. Am I actually going to see a pile of chicken bones? Like, <laughs> like every other time? But he guessed the bones again. He guessed okay. about the bones. It says I'm supposed to shake the bones. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I don't sign for it, I don't have to take it, right? That is what the voodoo princess said. <laughs> she said, he who signs for it has to take it, and he who doesn't lives another year. Uh, uh, hold on, let me just check my manifest. Uh -huh. Voodoo princess. Mm -hmm. Yep. Listen, another year. Right. That's what it says. Remember the lady we met on the boardwalk? Sure I do. So, <laughs> what are the rules again? He who signs so, for it has to take, take it, it, and he and who doesn't, doesn't lives for, for another year. year. Okay, I'm not gonna sign them. Oh, so, shucks. I really need you to sign this. This is kind of my job. Shucks. I deliver the bones. If you can't accept it, I could get fired, please. Oh, shake, shake, are you shake. gonna let a person lose their job? Yeah, good luck in your new life. Okay, well. <sighs> Sorry. Next time I deliver a package, it's gonna be late. <laughs> Sounds like you were cursed. I think, I think I almost was. <laughs> Sounds like I you mean, were... the FedEx guy definitely. Yeah. FedEx guy for sure. That was just like a general mail carrier's yeah. curse. Yeah. But yeah, my wife Dora, she's, uh, she's insane and she's into voodoo. <laughs> wow. I wonder why she chose that. <laughs> what do you mean? Just like why she chose that to get into, like why that was her hobby, like what's she running from, you know, what was hobby. before that? I mean, like how's, how long is it gonna last, right? Hey, hey, hey. this was her religion. Oh. <laughs> this is very intolerant. Can I ask, what marriage are you? What? If you must know, fifth. Since the voodoo obsession? She was already a practicing voodoo person when I met her. You'll probably stay together. It's probably fine. Oh, well, you'll probably, yeah, you'll probably be Hey, okay. you know what? For, for a second there, I thought we were going to fall in love. But then you clearly established you had a wife. <laughs> I never, hold on. I never established that I loved her, though. <laughs> Well, she established that she loved you by getting you cool voodoo presents. <laughs> You're on her side? You said the train was coming 20 minutes ago. <sighs> I'm supposed to trust you? I wanted a new life, and instead all I got was maybe a matrix simulation with a sad guy who doesn't even tell me the truth. Will you stop calling me sad? <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to take the truth. What are you going to do? I'm going to go home and try to get the package. <laughs> Probably just a bunch of bones, but I don't care. It's the principal. Fine. Go get your chicken bone car package or whatever it is. I will get my chicken bone car package. Oh, man. I wonder what other me is doing right now. <laughs> Darling! <laughs> Darling! Oh! Yes. Sweet pea, sweet pea. I'm yeah. glad I caught you before the train came. They said it's canceled. I don't know why I'm still here. Oh. I just I'm so glad, baby doll. Please come home. I'm so sorry about everything. I don't want you to start a new life. Please don't leave your old life with your family who loves you. But mom, it's June 20th. I can't take another summer of just casual Buddhism. I know, honey. <laughs> But you know, looking ahead past today isn't really the Buddhist way anyway, is it? You gotta live each day for today. And I want you to come home today and never leave. <laughs> so to speak. Okay, Mom. I guess okay. I'll come home. All right. But first, I have this nagging feeling like I was about to make a friend in some other timeline. <laughs> I checked in with other me. 
have that power now. <laughs> Other me is just gonna go back to her old way of life and not make any new friends. And when I started this train platform solo monologue, I said, even if I'm lonely, even if I'm scared, I will make a friend and be excited. <laughs> and that seems like something you can help me with. But first, you gotta figure out if you have a voodoo curse on you, because I don't need that shit right now. Can you wait here for approximately 35 minutes? I mean, have I left yet? <laughs> I gotta go real quick. Just talk to my wife. Okay. I'll be right here. Okay. <laughs> Doris, good, you're home. What's going on? Listen, I, don't, I don't have a lot of time to talk. I was knitting, but I did it with spaghetti noodles. Take that, Pinterest. <laughs> Doris, I need you to focus for just one second. What? I got one question for you. One? Two questions. I got three for you. Okay. How are you? Where have you been? What's going on? Uh, <laughs> sad train platform asking you questions. <laughs> All right. Now, put them in the right order. <laughs> Doris, fresh start. Woo! <laughs> Is there a voodoo curse on me? Mm, define you. <laughs> me, the guy who's right here. Um, okay, I didn't put one on you, but I don't know everyone in the world. Somebody else might have. Okay, let's just stick to you and me. Okay. You're saying you didn't put a voodoo curse on me. Why would I do that? You're my favorite husband. <laughs> Thanks, Doris. You're welcome. Was this not the outcome you were looking for? It's good enough. I also didn't get the outcome I was looking for with my spaghetti knitting project. Okay, Doris, it's okay. I love hobbies. All right. I'm gonna put this bag down. You should, yeah. <laughs> I've got some good news. What is it? Stop all the clocks! <laughs> Turn off your phones. Put that TV on mute. But Tell that dog to shut up. I don't have a voodoo. My wife did not put wait. a voodoo curse on me. Now wait. That's what you asked me. You first said, no, I said you have to figure out if you have one on you. Right. You only know that one person didn't put one on you. What are you, Doris? I Sounds like we have a lot in common. We, you know, great minds, etc. <sighs> Look, if I'm starting a new life inside of a simulation and you're the only person I know and there's no trains ever coming to take me out of it, I just gotta know that you're not gonna do some weird shit on me, okay? Well, I, I'm not. Hey, look at us having a fight in public like a couple of common sisters. <laughs> I just heard two people arguing in there. What is going on? I got someone I want you to meet. Great. <laughs> Do I come with you this you, time? Will you come with me this time? I guess so. All right. Hey, uh, oh. What's your name? <laughs> Darlene? Darlene, okay. <laughs> Doris, could you come out here, please? I'm indisposed! Dor Doris. I'm indisposed! Uh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. My, oh my God, oh. Doris. Oh my, oh. oh my God, Doris. Oh, oh my God. Doris, I was... Doris, Doris, first start, first start. Okay. I have Who's someone, your friend? I have, I have someone I'd like you to meet. Oh boy, a friend. This is Darlene. Hello! Hello. You look great, I like your outfit. I wish I wasn't wearing this dress. What's going on? Um, I think that, um, 
I was looking for something and, and I was looking for the wrong thing. Mm. And now I think that my friend Darlene here uh -huh. was looking for something and I thought that something was me, but I realized it's not me. You thought she was looking for you? Ma'am, did you also think that? I never thought I was looking not, for no, this man. I just thought that me. I was. Not okay. specifically me. It, it seems like there's less confusion than you think there uh, is. Yeah, I know. Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think she was looking for the idea of someone and I thought maybe that could be me. Sure. Obviously it's not. Okay. Sure. But I think it might be you, Doris. <gasps> Yay, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> I know. Right under my nose when you should be under Darlene's nose. We should be friends? <laughs> yes. How about we get a, someone else's opinion? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> 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 Thank you, I thought it switched sides for a second. Yeah. I'm someone else. It's beautiful. <clears throat> oh, I remember you, you sold me that stuff. When did that happen? Wait, the timelines are colliding. Are they? <laughs> if anyone knows, it's me. <laughs> are colliding and now you're here. Explain why. <laughs> I heard that someone else needed to weigh in on something. What? <laughs> I thought you needed to talk to someone else. You needed someone else to weigh in on yes, something. Yes, that's what, I think Doris needed that? Who, who um, needed that? <laughs> Doris asked for it. But I you, know you, so right. I, when you showed up, I was like, everybody be cool, I know this lady. Yeah. And then Doris was just here. Doris, do you want to go show me more terrible things that you've made? Yes, I do! I took a can of soup and I tried to turn it into a swimming pool for dogs. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Doris, Doris. Uh, yes? <laughs> Wouldn't you be interested to know if there's a world out there in which you succeeded with your swimming pool? I don't, I don't know. And another? I don't know. Where you didn't that this see is what a happened? Great idea. Oh, I love it. Like the movie Splash. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, I am her mom, honey. Hey, it's good to have you home, and I'm happy to be your new dad. Yeah. Me, the Dalai Lama. That's right. That's right, honey. Hey, good job with those ants. Oh, I didn't mean to kill them, really. I know you didn't. <laughs> but it was after Labor Day, so I was okay, right? Ah, <laughs> that's right. I'm sure, gl yeah. I'm sure glad I didn't run away because I physically wasn't allowed to because trains stopped existing. <laughs> I know. Look. Here's what it all comes down to. What do you step on the ant? You don't step on the ant. The ant steps on you. Well, <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> Sometimes you might feel like, uh, you know, you're split in two, you know? But uh, yeah. good news is, all is one. Um, you know what I mean? Huh? Like you may contain multitudes, as uh, a friend of mine once said. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, that's really wise. What, what did you say in your name? Uh, uh, the Dalai Lama. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> How could I forget? Um, hey, you want to put that bag down? <laughs> yeah, it's been getting kind of heavy. I'm pretty sure I haven't put it down this whole time, have I? Who knows? Maybe, Least of all me. <laughs> maybe there's another you somewhere who's still carrying a heavy bag. But that's not what you got to do. All you got to do is live your life. Yeah, lighten that load, sweetheart. It's just you, me, and the Dalai Lama <laughs> from here on out. Wow. Um, all right. I'll put my bag down. I'll see. the ants! <laughs> and it all happened in a place called Spontaneous.